All right, one type of problem that I'm going to add to your repertoire of k equilibrium stuff, and that is KSP. Um, and so I want to just tell you that this is simply a special kind of KEQ. In fact, KSP, where SP stands for solubility product, is basically the KEQ for a solid dissolving into ions. So it's just a KEQ, but when it's a special case where we have a solid dissolving into ions, instead of calling it a KEQ, we call it a KSP. So just as an example, um, I can compare, say, barium hydroxide which has a KSP value, or the KEQ for this, of five times 10 to the minus three. That's the equilibrium constant for when I have solid barium hydroxide falling apart and producing barium ions and hydroxide ions. And because it would be at equilibrium, they both have to be present, so literally, what I've got is I've dumped in a bunch of barium hydroxide, solid, and some of it dissolves and it turns into barium ions and some hydroxide ions, and it makes a saturated solution. Well, that doesn't look like saturated, but it makes a saturated solution. So being a saturated solution, I've got barium ions and hydroxide ions, but I also have some of the solid present but because it's equilibrium, at the same time, some of these barium and hydroxide ions are also turning into the solid. So we have an equilibrium where the solid is turning into ions and the ions are turning into solid. So the KSP is equal to five times 10 to the minus three for barium hydroxide. I looked it up out of a book. But if I write the expression for that, that's gonna be the concentration of barium ion times the concentration, that's this, of hydroxide ion squared, but because this is a solid that's essentially over one, or I don't need to write that because it's not necessary. So that's the specific thing when you have a solid on the left and the ions it breaks into on the right, we can call our K EQ KSP. So if I say barium hydroxide has a KSP of this, and then I compare it to something like copper iodate solid, and it has a KSP of 1.4 times 10 to the minus seven, I might say, hey, you know what? These both break into three ions. You know, the copper breaks into a barium and two hydroxide. This one breaks into a copper and two iodates that are both aqueous, but which one dissolves more? You might wanna pause it and think about that. Well, this is a smaller number, and this is equal to the concentrations of these multiplied together, squared. And so since this one is a larger number here, then the concentrations of the barium and the hydroxide must be larger than the concentrations of the copper and the iodate. And so this one would dissolve more. So as long as they're breaking apart into the same number of ions, we can actually just look at the KSP values and say, oh look, a bigger, bigger KSP means it breaks apart into more ions. But I wanna show you types of problem that might you might encounter just so that you can see an example of that. And so, um, here's an example problem, and this will kind of wrap us up. The KSP for magnesium phosphate is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 25. Holy moly, that is small. So that means that probably doesn't dissolve very much. So, you know, if I were to put some magnesium phosphate into some water, Ooh, formula, phosphates minus three, so Mg3PO42, there's probably only a very little bit of magnesiums and phosphates in here, not much, because that number is so very, very small. 
So there's probably going to be lots of solid and not many ions. Here's the question, two questions. A, what is the molar solubility, which I will call S, for the solid? And B, what are the equilibrium concentrations when a saturated solution is made? You guys, you see KSP, you give in numbers, this is the equilibrium. We're just going to write four steps. But because it's KSP, that means when I write my balanced equation, I have to start with the solid on the left. So Mg3PO42, whoa, that does not look like a 2, uh, solid has to be on the left because this is a KSP and that just defines how we write the equation, breaking apart into ions on the right. So three magnesium ions plus two phosphate ions. These are both aqueous. Great. Then I can write my KSP expression. This is just the KEQ. So magnesium ion cubed times phosphate ion squared over one, but I don't need to write that. And then I can do an ice table, which I'll just write it here. Well, here's the thing with the ice table. I don't need to fill out any parts that are a solid because their concentrations won't change. So we're going to assume that we threw this magnesium phosphate in, and so initially, and this was what we'll typically assume with KSP, initially none of it has dissolved yet, so we'll start with zero. Well, some of it dissolves. We, you know, it's going to have to shift to the right, so we're going to gain some. We don't know how much, so we normally would use X. But when we do KSP, it's not uncommon to use S as your variable, solubility, instead of X. I don't care. If you want to use X, it's fine. But notice, there's three magnesiums and two phosphates. So this is going to be plus 3S and this is going to be plus 2s, or call it 3x, or 2x. And so my equilibrium is going to be 3s and 2s. All right, that's my ice table. Last step, do the math. So if I'm going to do the math, I'm going to plug it back into my KSP. So my KSP is, what is it? 1 times 10 to the minus 25. is equal to the concentration of magnesium cubed times the concentration of phosphate squared. So let's see here, that's 27s cubed times 8s squared. I've got my calculator, you should have yours, right? You're going to make me do all the work. Okay, so 27 times 8, because I have no idea what that is, is equal to 216. S to the fifth is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 25. We're going to go ahead and solve for S. So 1 times 10 to the minus 25 divided by 216 is, let's see, 4.63 times 10 to the minus 28 is equal to S to the fifth. Holy moly. All right, I'll take the fifth root of, which is fun. Uh, so S is equal to 3.4, um, and we really were, if I go back to my answer, had only two sig figs. So 3.4 times 10 to the minus 6. The answer to S, whatever S is, is the solubility. I picked an especially hard one for you. So I've answered part A. The solubility is S. The second one is, what are the equilibrium concentrations? Well, 
3s and 4s. So 3s gives me an equilibrium concentration for this of 1.02 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. That would be the concentration of magnesium. And then 2s, if I take that s and I multiply it by 2, gives me 6.8 times 10 to the minus 6 molar of phosphate. So these are my equilibrium concentrations. So here's the only thing that's different, you guys. The only thing. KSP tells you how to write your equation. You have to write it with solids on the left, ions on the right. It's still equilibrium. We still did the four steps. Okay, Balanced equation, expression, ice table, and then math. The only thing that's kind of new is this concept of molar solubility. And so whatever you solve for S, just plain old S, or X if you prefer it, is going to be your molar solubility. It essentially tells you how many moles of your solid, who have a coefficient of 1, how many moles of your solid dissolved per liter. So that's your solubility. All right, that wraps it up. You're going to get a chance to try some of those in class tomorrow.